Hello everyone, Nelson Norway, I'm back again. Yeah, well, today you are going to see me do one of the hands of my summer nails. It has been a couple of years since I had two equal hands on my vacation, so I was going to do two equal hands. But then I was think thinking about the design that I wanted to do. And then I was thinking what color is I'm going to use. So I was leaning towards sea green color or a, or a purplish pink. Uh, but then I was thinking, why not do one on each hand? <laughs> the same design, but a different color on each hand. I wanted to start with the green on my left hand, but then I was thinking, I am going out boating. If you're going boating, you should always have the green on this hand and red on this hand. So I actually think I have to change it over. My husband will definitely notice. So I think I will do that. I think I'm going to use some of these colors. One is Make a Difference, the pink one, and it's not Xmas yet, Christmas yet. And the Glamour Gel number 6 from Brillbird and number 15. I love these colors. But I also have um, the ones from Light Elegance that are almost similar. These two. And the ones there are Gordy but Gorgeous and clown Clowning Around. Here they are. So, I'm not quite sure which one of these I'm going to mix. And I'm going to use these as a base and then I'm going to use um, some shell and power shell and some power flake that are colored in my nail bed. Not my free edge tip or in my tip, but in my nail bed this time. And uh, the builder gels and the base gels and so on will be Brill Birds. And I will probably show you, hopefully show you, both hands when I'm finished editing this video. So, let's start! So I have done the nail prep. Uh, so I have put on, or I'm putting on the forms here, a little bit downwards, since we are doing, going to build some almond, kind of almond nails. And then starting with the dehydrator and then we go over with some acid free primer. All product is from Brillbird and once that is uh, dry, uh, this also need to air dry before you go over with the gel bond or bond gel, sorry. Um, this one needs to be applied really thin, very thin layer. Even though I have wiped off this stick while I, <laughs> or the brush while I pu pulled it out from the, from the bottle, I there are still enough product on my brush so I can actually cover all these four nails. So you see me just apply the gel first and then go over and and go into the nails and sides, side walls or not the side walls but down towards the side walls. And then I'm going in with my Brillbird Latte Gel, the white, semi-transparent white. I really love these white colors uh, lately. When I'm working on my own hands, I tend to work from one side to the other, I kind of start and work on, for instance, the left side first and then move over to the right side from top to bottom. And after I cured it, the first layer, I pinch my nail. And then I move over to my middle finger, I guess, before I put on the second layer. 
So, yeah, I, well, I'm a little bit all over when I do my own nails, I guess. But the main thing here when I'm going to do my nail beds that are going to have a lot of encapsulated things in it, it's important that I do not do not fill up my nail bed with this um, white builder gel. So I try to put the white, put the builder gel on the tip of my voyage so that I have enough room to to put my encapsulated bits. And wipe off the edges so that I do not have that much to wipe off when I'm finished. And that one is pinched. I go in and put on a second layer of my index finger. So these this layers are quite thin. Um, but it has that tiny adhesion to the free edge. So I have to be careful when I remove my forms. But um, since I'm going to extend the nail bed a little bit, I I need that um, free edge to be there, that I extended tip to be there. Sorry. And you can see that I put the beads on the middle, and then I concentrate mainly on one side, like the right side here, <laughs> and work my way all the way down, and then I go over and work on the other side. That is how I like to do it when I work on my own nail and own nails, and especially I work with my non-dominant hand here. So, yeah, it's it's quite hard. Uh, actually, it's not that hard any <laughs> anymore because I have gotten so used to do my own nails that working with my left hand is almost equal as working with my right hand. So after these two are finished. I take them off. And as you can see here, I have put some glitter at the tip of this form. Um, I had an idea. <laughs> I had an idea. I wanted to do uh, like an uh, accent nail with the glitter on the tip. But uh, it looked okay, just that nail. But uh, in the end, I did not end up liking it. It kind of ruined the... Uh, yeah, I, I just did not like it. So you will see this nail, yeah, that I'm work while I'm working with it, but I will remove it uh, in the end. As I usually do, I always make something that I end up removing again. That is just how I like to work. <laughs> I never know how the end result here comes out. That is just me in a nutshell. Yeah, well, chase the gel and try to keep it in the center. That is a good idea before you cure this. And also pinch it afterwards. Brillbird's gels are very forgiving. Uh, with the gel. If you forget to pinch it after 15 seconds, you can actually <laughs> you can actually pinch this nail gel after a minute. Uh, I love I love this about Brillbird's products. They are so um, pinchable. <laughs> they are really made for the ones that love to pinch the nails and make extreme nails and so on. That is what I like about them. So I'm working on the pinky now, as you can see. The same thing, working from one side to another. Uh, it's kind of opposite from what you do when you work on a client or yeah, on another person. Then you will start from the top and work yourself to the bottom of the free edge. And this last layer here. When you're working with gel, it always looks like a huge lump. Well, at least when I am working, I like to <laughs> use a little bit more gel than I actually need. But here I wipe off the tackle layer on my tip here because I 
need a dry tip where I'm going to put my nail bed. So I'm just putting on uh, this um, transparent, yeah, <laughs> regular builder gel from from Vilbert. It's called Iron. This uh, specific gel that I'm using here, and I I cure it just to have a an extra layer, safety layer. Since I'm putting down this dark color. Color of money was that the name of it? I'm not sure. <laughs> you can you can find the the colors in the description box below and everything I have used. So I'm put starting with the green all just with my thin liner brush near my cuticles. And once I have done that, I go in with some glitter. I'm not sure what type of glitter I used here. Um, uh, glitterless nails, I think. I found something that I just put on there, <laughs> so just to have a transition, yes, that's what I was going to say. And then I go in and paint my nail bed. So I paint up my nail bed with the green color. These nails was actually very fun to do, but also one of the most challenging nails that I have done in a while. Or actually, yeah, <laughs> it's been a while since I had such a challenge because uh, it's really important that you paint the nail bed precise while you do this. Uh, and then I go in with a green glitter, gaudy but gorgeous, yeah, from Light Elegance. So I start to build it up little by little. But not too much because this is the nail bed. You do not want your nails to be thick, even though this is the apex area. So you have a little bit to go on. But my nails are also naturally curvy, so um, I actually do not have that much to go on. <laughs> uh, yeah, I always have a problem. My nails can never be flat. So then I go in with some um, chrome flakes um, first, some that I have bought from a friend of mine, and then some from Brill Birds, a green one from Brill Birds, and that um, that has a green and blue and yeah, beautiful chrome flakes, and also the iridescent one that you can see behind my hand there. They are from Brill Bird. So I'm just building up the nail with different colors and textures and to get a really three-dimensional nail. And that is the fun thing. I was going on vacation. I had to look at these nails for <laughs> three to four weeks uh, at least. So uh, yeah, I had them on for, for almost five weeks and then I took them off. So yes, this was my holiday nails. And then you go in with some builder gel again, just so thin, very gently over the chrome flakes so that they get encapsulated and you get a wet layer because I am going in and put um, stones directly into this wet layer. The power shells, I mean, not the stones. It looks like stones, but they are shells or abalone. I'm not sure what how you pronounce abalone shells, power shells. So I put the biggest one in the center where I have more room. And then I put the smaller flakes around, um, tiny abalone or power flakes around the edges and side walls of the nails and the cuticle area near the cuticle area and um, yeah that is what I do and I put some of my shells that I have picked in a beach in Norway that are some tiny 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 full shells uh, we'll see if I can show them to you later so I am curing those shells into place 
and then I go in with my builder gel again, iron builder gel from Brillbird, and I put a huge blob on, and it's very important to keep that um, gel at the same place, yeah, where the green nail bed is, so you keep that gel precisely on over that green nail bed. Uh, it was really challenging, but at the same time it was actually quite easy. The gel here is really easy to work with, and especially when I have wiped off the um, tacky layer underneath, so that the gel did not run anywhere outside. So I kind of had quite good control over the gel. You see, I had I had to chase that bead, <laughs> but I saved it before it went too far. I actually did not flood any side walls or any cuticles at all. I am pretty amazed by myself here. And again, I worked with my non-dominant hand. <laughs> Just to brag about that once more. <laughs> I actually really like these nails when I'm finished with them. So this these nails here is like a trust the process nails because it looks horrible when you're working with them and um, before you file them especially. So, uh, but when you file them and you put on the final top coat and everything just comes out and that is just, a, that is one of my favorite things to do and that is to build up nails in layers and layers and layers and just file them down and everything just comes out. That is what I love to do with nails. And of course I cure them once I'm finished with the nail bed or else they would have been all over the place. So this is just the pinky, no index finger left here. And wiping off the tackle layer because now it is time to go in and file the side walls straight and just roughly go over the shape of the tip and the side walls. Yeah, that is mainly what I do on every single one. Just looking to get the straight side wall. And I was not sure how long I wanted these nails, so I started out um, sculpting them quite long. But you will see that, um, or you might have seen it already, that they ended up being a little bit shorter. Since I was going to deal with ropes and things for four weeks, no lifting by the way, <laughs> after five weeks. So I went in with uh, yeah, just this straight drill bit so that you get uh, make them the smile lines really straight and crisp. That is really important for a good result. And you can see that I go over the edges to make them crisp and nice. And then here again it is important to go around where the green line or the green nail bed is or smile line or whatever you want to call it. You see where I'm working so I probably you know what I'm talking about. And then I go over with the file and yeah just perfect the, the thing that I did with my electric file. So this is actually the most crucial point, uh, what I did here. And this is uh, the thing that you really need to be... Yeah, yeah, you really need to make it crisp and you really need to trust what you're doing and, and think that yes, this is okay, I'm doing it right. <laughs> but yeah, 
and after I finished filing this I go in with the green uh, color again and I paint that side wall the smile line sorry I paint the smile line with the green color just to get an even better crispness of the smile lines the smile line gets even more crisp when you do this it's like you're painting on a little green edge and cure it of course and once that is done uh yeah well yeah i put on a little bit clear on my glitter here just to this was supposed to fade in with the white one so yeah this nail is going to look like a log clump log so this will go away soon later because I will file everything away but you will not see that <laughs> I'm going to spare you for that so then I go in with a white latte latte build the gel and then I just fill it up around and tuck it up against the smile line and yeah it it gets lumpy but you try to keep the white mostly in the center of the nail and up against the smile line you need to tuck it all the way up where your smile line starts because otherwise you will not get the crisp white corners uh, that is really important when you file that green or that nail bed down you want uh, your smile line to end up white and crisp and in the corners so you need to tuck that uh, white gel all the way in there in the corners and it has to be tucked almost over the nail bed I like to do that because then I know I, I just have to file it down and the whole nail bed will pop out again when I'm when I'm start to file it down. If I had done something on a client they would have Yeah, I think their eyes would have popped out by now. <laughs> Are you seriously going to think that I'm going to walk around with these nails? But trust me, trust me, it's all going to be good when I'm filing it down. It doesn't look good, but it will look good. Promise you. I liked it. So, I am actually finished with these uh, fingers. I'm not going to show you these yet. I have this chunky lump of <laughs> thumb left. I, I will show you the rest of the nails after I have finished filing this. So let's file this and see where we end up. I will be using um, this five-way bit or three-way bit bit it depends on what you call it but it cuts uh, the same both with <laughs> with the right hand use and left hand use and these two are for left hand use so I'm going to use some of these to take off the bulk and I will go over to hand filing at the end so, as I said, I am just going over and debulking this nail. Uh, I use a speed of 20,000 rotation per minute, I think. Um, I'm not sure if it's forward or reverse mode, since I'm using my um, left hand here. So, yeah. Always use your pinky to support your nail while you're using such high speed. So you can see my pinky is resting on my other fingers here so that I can steer my my e-file with my other fingers. So I let the 
I let a bit and the speed work for me. So I'm just holding firmly and tightly onto the handpiece and just let the bit and the speed work for me. Even when I removed all these uh, shells again later on, I had no burning sensation, <laughs> not at all, even though I removed a lot of thick shells really close to my nail bed. But as long as you do not push and press, press, sorry, push and press on uh, with, on your handpiece while you're working with it, uh, you will be fine. I actually used 25,000 rotation when I removed everything. And then I go over with just a hand file to, of course, uh, refine my shape. You can see I have sped this up because there is no method to my madness when I'm working with my non-dominant hand. So after I've done that I go in with this pointy bit to really smooth down the transition from my natural nail to the extension. Or, yeah, extension, that's not the extension, it's the beginning of my enhancement, sorry. And then I go in with my um, buffer, because that is really important to have a smooth surface when you're going to put on the top coat on this one. And just clean up all the dust before you start to with the top coat. And again, I'm working with my non-dominant hand, so there will be no uh, beautiful uh, shots of me applying the top coat because I'm usually shaking while I'm applying my with my um, within my left hand. So yeah, you just have to trust me. This will look good in the end. <laughs> so I'll cure this. And then I remove the rest of my nails, so here they are. Putting also cuticle oil, rub that in, and I am finished! Here they are! <laughs> I hope you can get a good look at them. They, You will not get a uh, good uh, three-dimensional look and in a video, but I I was mesmerized for four weeks, so <laughs> this kept me entertained while I was on holiday. Take a look at my smile line here. I made a little blooper here. It did not came out as crisp as I wanted. If you look closely here, you can see those that are the point at my tiny shells that I have encapsulated encapsulated in my thumb here. Uh, there are some tiny tiny white shells. And I, uh, of course, you will see picture very soon on my other hand. I did not like that that much, probably because the shells did not was not pink. <laughs> but it was more than enough for for my holidays nails. So I hope you all like to watch this video. And if you did so, if you are not subscribed to my channel yet, please do so. And, of course, leave a comment if you have something nice to say and hit that like button. And, of course, check out my other social media and um, here they are. So, I hope to see you soon. I will try to put out videos a little bit more quickly uh, from now on than I have done lately. Uh, so, I hope to see you very, very soon again. So, bye-bye for now, everyone. Bye-bye. Enjoy the nails.